Uh, today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial video showing you how to host your bot uh, that you made with Discord Bot Studio. Um, so obviously prerequisite for this would be you've already had DBS and created a bot with it and now you want to be able to host it 24-7. Um, uh, so the solution I'm going to be showing you is using a VPS through Pebblehost um, and that will for $3 a month allow you to run your bot 24-7. Um, I picked Pebblehost because it's really pretty easy to use um, and as I said it's only three bucks a month so it's pretty cheap. Um, I'll leave a link in the description that you can use if you want to support DBS and that's an affiliate link so I'll get a little kickback. Um, but also you obviously don't have to and you can just come directly to Pebblehost. So once you're on the site we can just go to Discord Bot by clicking that at the top and then it's going to give us some information about the hardware and show you the price, $3 a month, um, and we can just click order to get started. Uh, so it's going to take us to the billing side of things. As you can see, I've already created an account. Um, if you haven't, it's going to ask you to create one at some point. Um, so once you've done that, you can uh, just follow along with me. So this page is basically letting us configure the server how we like. Uh, the first thing is you can choose a billing cycle so if you pay for a longer period of time you get a discount on the rate that you're paying monthly. Um, I'm just going to leave that monthly for now for the purposes of a tutorial and then you can choose where you want the server to be located. I'm in NA so I'm going to keep it in North America but obviously if you're closer to Europe or in Europe then choose that. Um, bots made with DBS are in Node.js so leave that as it is and then we can choose an amount of RAM we want for the server. Um, in most cases, one gigabyte, which is what it's giving us, is gonna be plenty. Um, if you have a big server uh, with a lot of people using a lot of commands, a lot of events firing, you may need to move that up in the future, um, but I really doubt it. And then you can pick a server name. This doesn't really matter what you call this, um, but you just have to put one or it's not gonna let you continue. So once you've uh, made sure that's all correct, you can hit continue here on the right hand side and it's gonna take us to a checkout. So for the sake of not showing my payment information, um, I skipped through a couple of screens, but it was pretty self-explanatory. Um, so once you get to the invoice, you can choose a payment method um, and then you can just choose if you want it to be one time or recurring. Um, and then just as a note, in the last clip, I said that um, paying for a longer period of time would add a discount. Um, I misread. That's actually not correct. You were just basically choosing how often you wanted to be billed. Um, and it's going to be $3 a month, no matter which uh, duration you choose. Um, so just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to be clicking credit debit one time. So once you do that, you're going to be redirected to a Stripe checkout page. And then obviously this is where you're going to enter your card information. Um, and this is all obviously if you had chosen credit card as your checkout method. Um, so you can fill out this info and then click pay and it'll move forward. After that last step, you're going to be getting an email from Pebblehost and it's going to have a couple of things. One of those is a link to the panel. Um, and this is where you're actually going to be managing your bot. And then it's going to be showing you the login information. Um, there'll be a temporary password. And basically you use that and log in on the panel link that it gives you. Uh, and then once you do that, it's going to ask you to make a permanent password. And after that's done, you're going to see a screen like this, except you'll probably only have one server. Um, this is the one that I was just using previously to test all this stuff out. Um, so tutorial is the one that I've actually just created as we we're walking through these steps. So I'll click on that one. So essentially what this panel is, is a control panel for your server. So at the top right, you can see that we have buttons to start, stop, and restart. And essentially those are gonna let you start, stop, and restart your bot. Um, I've noticed that stopping the bot can be a little bit slow sometimes, so you might have to be patient with that, but starting it is usually very quick. Um, so what do we need to do from here? Uh, we want to go into the file manager, first of all, 
And the reason for that is because we're actually going to be uploading our files for our DBS bot. So first we can just click this checkbox here and we'll check everything below. These are just some like template files that they provide us um, for a basic node application, but we don't want those because we're going to be uploading our own files from the bot. So once I've selected all those, I can just click delete. And yes, I'm sure. So now we have a clean slate, there's no files on our server, and we're good to go ahead with uploading our bot files. To upload our bot files, we're going to go ahead and click this upload button here, and then the easiest way is to click folder. Um, I've already navigated to the location um, where my bot is, so just showing you how that would work. Uh, essentially, what happens in DBS when you make a new bot is you choose a location and then it's going to create this bot files folder in that location and all the files that your bot needs to run live in that folder. So we want to upload the contents of that directory uh, so you can just navigate to wherever you created the bot that you want to be using uh, or that you want to be hosting rather and then click that bot files folder and then just choose to upload that entire folder. So the upload's probably going to take a while. As you can see, there's a lot of files. Uh, the majority of those are from node modules, so they're not things that are actually in the DBS source code. Um, but you can just be patient with this, and it won't really take too long. Maybe just walk away from your computer for a minute or two, and then it should be good to go, and we can move on to the next step. Once the upload is done, we're going to see something like this. So the bot files folder is the only thing we have inside the top level directory. Um, so what we want to do is actually move the files that are inside this folder so that they're at the top level. Um, this is important. So to do that, we can just click into that folder. And then what we're going to do is again select the checkbox to make sure we have picked all the files. And then at the top right here, there's a button that says move. And if we click and just leave this field as it is, just a slash, that means like top level directory, and click move, it's going to move everything up one level. So now if we click up to go back up to the top level, we can see everything got moved up. Um, now just to avoid any confusion, we can select that bot files folder now that it's empty and delete that. So great, if you've gotten to this point, that's good. That means that you have all the files for your bot on the server. Um, and now there's just one last step we need to do before we can really run the bot. And that is make one change to the main bot.js file. And I'll explain what that is once we're inside the file. So to edit this file, bot.js, we can just click on it. And then we're just going to make a one line change. Here under line 7, we're going to want to add this line of code. Um, please note if you're going to be typing this manually that this is two underscores here in front of their name and then that's the only change we need to make. I'll make sure that this um, line of code is in the description for this video so all you have to do is copy it and then paste it here on line 8 like I've done. Uh, it's not really important that you know uh, why we're making this change but essentially there's just some differences with the environment running code on a VPS as opposed to like your local computer and so a couple things like user data are broken on the VPS if we don't make this change. So once we've done that, we can click save and it's gonna take us out of that file. Um, and then while we're in the file manager, I'll go into the bot data folder and mention a couple of things about updating your bot. So if you make changes to your bot after you've uploaded it, um, all you're gonna to wanna to do is come into this bot data folder and then you're going to be uploading any changes to the commands, nodes, and settings folder. So it's important that you don't upload any changes to the user or variables folder because that's going to be overwriting your uh, user data and your server variables and your global variables. So if you want to overwrite those, um, feel free, but obviously in most cases you don't want to overwrite your user data when you're making updates to your bot, like adding new commands or new event responses or anything like that. So just to reiterate, upload any changes to the settings, nodes, and commands folder. You can just overwrite what's on the VPS um, 
with your local changes that DBS has created. After you've made that change to bot.js, um, we can go ahead and hit back to get out of the file manager, and that's going to take us back to the control panel. Uh, there's just one quick change we need to make here. Uh, there's a field here called start file. We're going to want to change that to bot.js and then click save. And basically that's because the file name for our bot that DBS creates is bot.js. And so by making that change, the server knows what file to target in order to start the uh, bot application. So once you've made that change, you can click start and your bot should start up. Another thing to note is that you have access to a console here. So if we click into the console, we're going to go ahead and see any output that's coming from the bot. So you can see um, this is outputting the different servers that this test bot is in, showing some stuff about handling initialization events, um, etc. So there's relevant info in the console if you know what you're looking for. And then also you can see your resource usage. So I mentioned earlier in the video that you probably won't need more than one gig of RAM. Um, as you can see at the moment, it's using something like 80 megabytes when it's idling. Um, obviously that may spike and the CPU may spike when the bot is actually being used, um, but you can monitor that here. And then if you need to um, allocate more resources to the server, you can do so in the future. If you followed along to this point, then your bot should be up and running. Um, and if you leave it that way, it'll be running 24-7 um, for the foreseeable future. If you want to make changes, I would recommend stopping it and then making those changes. Um, if you also just want to take it offline, you can click stop. Um, but yeah, essentially that's it for this tutorial. Um, if, Like always, if you have any questions or need help with anything, you can feel free to join our support Discord server and ask there. Or if you drop a comment on this video, I might be able to help there as well. So uh, thanks for watching and look out for the next tutorial.